Good morning. Good morning. What a difference the week makes. Uh, spread out if you can and uh, enjoy, the, uh, enjoy the morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God.
worship God. The Lord is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen. Peace be with you. Jesus stands among us. Peace be with you. The risen Lord is here. Let us worship God. The Lord be with you and also with you. We have come together, O oh God, to be clothed with the power from on high. Meet us here with the truth where we will come. And with joy we can share with sincerity. Awaken us by the power of your Holy Spirit to life and all its fullness here and now. Grant us courage, strength, and love as we praise you for all your goodness. Be with us as we lift up our hands, our hearts, and our voices. Prepare us for the everlasting life of Christ Jesus, in whose name we worship. we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
In humility and faith, let us confess our sin to God. Eternal God, in whom we live and move and have our being, whose face is hidden from us by our sin, and whose mercy we forget in the blindness of our hearts, cleanse us from all our offenses and deliver us from proud thoughts and vain desires, that with reverence and humble hearts we may draw near to you, confessing our faults, Fighting in your grace, and finding in you our refuge and strength. Through Jesus Christ, your Son. mercy of the Lord is from everlasting into everlasting. The psalmist declares, as heavens are high above the earth, as far as east is from the west, so far will God remove our transgressions from us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Since God in Christ has forgiven us, let us also forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Grace to you and peace in our Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome you as we celebrate this wonderful season of Eastertide. I uh, would invite you to take the friendship pad found on the aisle and pass it down the row and back, and you might see those who are sitting in your pew and welcome them uh, after service. We remember uh, our fearless folks who are out at Nokomi, uh, hopefully not getting flooded in Nokomi. Um, worshiping uh, there this morning. Uh, also would want to remind you that after the late service, if any of you want to come back, there'll be a reception in the uh, makeshift parlor for uh, our new members who'll be joining at the late service. Also a word of welcome to Pam Bowman, a dear friend of mine from a church that I served the senior year of seminary, New Providence, New Jersey, uh, she is in, as others will be later in the late service, for the Outreach Foundation Board, and we're grateful for your uh, service and, and being here. Um, I want to invite now Eleanor Eichert and Rachel Woolley 
to give a minute for mission from our youth. Hi, I'm Rachel Woolley. And I'm Eleanor Eichern. And we're the 10th grade representatives for the Youth Council. Next week, April 30th, the Youth Council will be hosting a kickoff celebration for, and including a scavenger hunt to introduce the new youth space. Following, there will be a celebratory brunch to kick off the new space, and yes, donuts will be included. We hope all the youth can come explore the new space with us, and we hope to see you there. Thank you. Let us continue worship. Lord be with you. Gracious God, in Jesus Christ, you have been our hope in ages past, and you are our hope for years to come. Be our hope this day, we pray, as the scriptures are read and your gospel proclaimed, that we might be filled with the unsinkable hope that is ours in Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our first reading comes from the first letter of Peter, the first chapter, beginning at verse 3. Hear the word of God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, God has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though, imper though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
from the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, verses 19 through 31. Hear the word of God. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you as the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called a twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told them, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them, although the doors were shut. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. When I was a child, I was very shy. I hid behind my father. I hid behind my mother, afraid of strangers, strangers. I was afraid of that. When I was three years old, my parents took a trip to Europe and they brought me over to my uncle and aunt's and to my cousin's home. And apparently, my two cousins, both of them girls, both of them a little older than I, uh, pretty much attacked me for about 10 days. As soon as my parents came back, my mom took me to a grocery store, and there in the cereal aisle, a little four-year-old girl came up and tried to hug me, and I punched her in the nose. (laughs) Four-year-old girls, I was afraid of that. I was once afraid of going over on a sleepover and being away from home. I was once afraid of trying new things. I was once afraid of speaking in public. And now people will look at their watches and say, will he ever shut up? (laughs) Speaking in public. I was afraid of that. What are the things of which you were once afraid, but are now no longer? If I gave you time, you'd probably come up with a list, right? Mary Magdalene, she went to a tomb, encountered someone she thought to be the gardener, and the gardener said, why are you weeping? And she said, sir, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. She was afraid of that. But then the gardener said her name, and she was no longer afraid. Mary ran out from the garden straight to the disciples and proclaimed, I have seen the Lord. Did anyone believe her? Why would anyone believe her? The disciples all had seen body and blood, and that has a way of staying with you. The 
disciples received Mary's Easter testimony by hiding in a room. John writes, The doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. I wish John had not written that last part, for fear of the Jews, because I'm afraid that people throughout history have used such verses to say, look, it's those Jews we need to be afraid of. And when you can stoke people's fear with a poor biblical reference, there's no telling what people will do. There's no telling. But we should tell. We should say that millions and 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 millions of people were killed because they were Jews, afraid. We tend to be afraid of those people who are not like ourselves. We build detention camps, we enact legislation, we upgrade our security. I know, I know, I know, I know in this day and age, you cannot be too careful. People are being slaughtered, and it's terrifying. Do you know during the course of a year during the last administration, over 3,000 people were killed? Over 400,000 people were injured just over a year in our country. Do you remember the episodes that killed them? Oh, they were a text message a cell phone conversation. 3,000 people were killed because of distracted driving. What should we do to keep these people from murdering innocent? Murdering innocent people. Not much. Because we are not afraid of people who look like us. We are afraid of those who don't. The doors of the house where the disciples met were locked for fear of the Jews. Or a half a century ago, the Japanese. For fear of the Muslims. For fear of the Sikhs. For fear of the Hispanics. You name it. We can easily be swayed. When do you stop believing that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself? When is the moment when you walk away from your faith and lock yourself in a room tight, afraid? Here's my hunch. What we're most afraid of is a God who refuses to leave us alone. <laughs> refuses to leave us alone when we're locked up tight. Here's my hunch. We are most afraid of a God who is able to get through our walls and our security system and greets us with these words, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Did you hear that? As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Did you hear that? Peace be with you. As my Father has sent me, so I send you. Just like Jesus, we are being sent. We are being sent to live his life. In his life, he spoke to Pharisees. In his life, he spoke to Samaritan women. In his life, he spoke to the blind. In his life, he spoke to the weak. In his life, he spoke to the dead. And they were raised. So I send you. His life was marked by wounds and death and resurrection, so I send you. And I'm afraid of that. 
aren't you? When push comes to shove in this world, do you look like the one whom you follow? This week, I invited myself over to Danielle and Eileen Potts' home. I had a question for Danielle, who is a, who is a member of this church and also a professor of New Testament over at Vanderbilt. And uh, Danielle makes a mean shot of espresso, and Eileen cuts a very liberal slice of blueberry coffee cake that she makes. And it is the best continuing education I can ever hope for. I listen and I learn. And uh, this past week, Danielle told a story about being a, a young, young childhood, young boy in France. It was World War II. And there were a lot of people who looked like the person they followed. What they call those people, what we have called those people, are Nazis. I know there are probably a bunch of those people who didn't want to look like the person they followed, but felt the pressure to do so. But Danielle shared about his grandparents and his mother and father who lived on a farm in France and his grandparents, his mother and father, they looked like the person they followed. Huguenot Christians they were. And they were hiding Jewish refugees on their farm. Who are all these people, Danielle asked his father and mother. And they said, they're your aunts and uncles. They're your cousins. So many cousins. Can you imagine putting not only your life at risk, but the life of your child at risk? Because, because of some spirit that Jesus is sending you by. I'd be afraid of that. But what a story to live. What an amazing testimony that strangers, aliens, refugees are worth giving your life for. Because just as the Father has sent me, so I send you. This is our story. I'm afraid of that. I do, I do believe that the safe days of Christendom are over. And now we are being forced to be exposed as to who we really are. And so would any of us dare to claim that the Spirit of God has been breathed upon us and that we are to look like the one whom we follow. Jesus went into darkness. Where in your life is darkness? Do you know some people? Do you know some places that need to experience the light of Christ? As my Father has sent me, so I send you. Jesus walked across borders. Where is the foreign land in your life? As my Father has sent me, so I send you. Jesus cleaned up some bad theology, poisonous places designed to keep some people down. Where in this world has been poisoned? Who are the people for whom the poison has spilled upon? Where are the bad relationships? Where are the places in your life where you have said things that you should have never have said? Done things that you should have never have done, but maybe the Spirit is calling you forth by some mercy to proclaim some forgiveness, 
to be about part of some reconciliation, how frightening it is, isn't it, to say, I'm sorry. How frightening it is to give some mercy. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. In John's Gospel, Jesus spends time in conversation. So long the conversations are in John's Gospel, we can't ever read them in church. We don't have time for it. Because we got to get out of here. We are all about instant communication these days, 140 characters or less. But not Jesus. Not Jesus. Taking the time to look into our eyes. Taking the time to work into our soul, into our heart, into our minds. Where might the Spirit be leading us to go into eyes and hearts people who hunger and thirst for to be known. Love one another just as I have loved you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Such actions come with sacrifice. Such actions come with wounds, body, and blood. Look, when I was a child, there was a day when I hid behind my parents, strangers. I was afraid of that, trying new things. I was afraid of that. When I was a child, I punched a girl in a grocery store, four-year-old girl. I was afraid of that at one time. What I'm afraid of now is that Jesus keeps breathing a spirit upon me. And I keep fighting it. Because I like my life the way it is. And I'm pretty comfortable with it. And yet I believe there's this spirit that has been breathed out upon me, and I think I'm being called to something different. Not somewhere else. Something different right here. I think I'm being called to go out onto the mission field. And I think I'm being called to bring you along with me. I have been given this vision of families of our church praying together. Being called to places in this world where the phones don't work and the electricity doesn't work, but prayer does. I have been given this vision where the work is reconciliation. And maybe your way of going with God is different than my way of going with God, but let me work with you and you on me but let's work God out together. I'm telling you, I'm afraid of this. I don't want to do it. But Easter is more than lilies and fine dress. Easter brings God's time now. And it sounds like this. Who are these people? They're your uncles. They're your aunts. They're your cousins. They're the children of God. When push comes to shove, in this world, I'd like to look like the one who I say I follow. And I just see a day when this church is buzzing even on the lowest Sunday of the year. And miracles are taking place and there's grace that prevails over hate and sacrifice that prevails over safety and music over the sound of war. 
And I see a day that we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as a sun. And I see a day where I say to myself and to God and to anyone who will listen, look, look at all this. And to think, I was afraid of this. Not anymore. our hymnal on page 17, let us, let us use the uh, affirmation of faith. Let us, stand, let us stand and say what we believe. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Holy Spirit, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. With gratitude to God for all the blessings so richly bestowed upon us, with joy and thanksgiving, let us return to God from our life and labor as the ushers wait on us for the morning offering.
Friends, this is not a Presbyterian table only. It's the Lord's, and our Lord invites all to come and be nourished. So come, you who have much faith, and you who have little. You who have been here often, and you who have not been here in a long time. You who have tried to follow, and you who have failed. Come because it is our Lord who is the host and invites us to feast, to be nurtured in the way that we might live up to the image he has for us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, creator and ruler of the universe. At your word, the earth was made and spun on its course among the planets. Your hand formed us from the dust of the earth and set us among all your creatures to love and to serve you. And when we were unfaithful to you, you kept faith with us. Your love remained steadfast, and when we were enslaved in Egypt, you broke the bonds of slavery, led us through the sea to freedom, and made covenant to be our God. By a pillar of fire, you led us through the desert to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. You spoke of love and justice in the prophets and in the word made flesh. You lived among us, manifesting your glory. He died that we might live, and is risen to raise us to new life. Therefore we praise you, singing with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every time and place, to the glory of your mighty name. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, whom you sent to save us. He came with healing in his touch and was wounded for our sins. He came with mercy in his voice and was mocked as one despised. He came with peace in his heart and met violence and death. By your power, he broke free from the prison of the tomb, and at his command, the gates of hell were opened. The one who is dead now lives. And the one whose name is above all names, before whom every knee shall bow, is raised to rule over all creation. In ascending on high, he promised to be with us always. So in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this wine and celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Great is the mystery of faith. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that in breaking this bread and sharing this cup, our eyes may be opened to recognize Christ's presence. Blessed art thou, O God, whose steadfast love abides forever. We marvel at the force of life that throbs within this wonderful world. For the excitement of spring with its warm sun and refreshing rain, we praise you. For the earth's beauty displayed in glorious color, blooming flowers, the simple forms of life, we express our profound gratitude. The heavens do indeed proclaim your glory and the firmament your handiwork. We thank you also for the revelation of yourself in Jesus Christ. During Eastertide, we are mindful of his obedient death and glorious resurrection. And like the disciples, we are overwhelmed and frequently confused. On the one hand, we believe and rejoice that death is conquered. On the other, the world seems to continue as if nothing has happened. Greed is prevalent. Human beings continue to exploit one another. War and violence continue among us, and our faith is challenged. 
Help us, O oh God, like your servant Thomas, we believe. Help our unbelief. Keep us immersed in the great Easter promises that we may be convinced that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, and experience true life in him. How grateful we are for his patience, his forgiveness, his constant presence through the Holy Spirit. We continue to pray for the world for which he died. May our love of peace triumph over propensity for war. May our efforts to reduce violence be more diligent than our efforts to harm one another. May we share with those who hunger, clothe those who are lacking, and give our abundance as you have commanded. Remind us repeatedly, O God, that we are to give our very lives to find abundant life. We pray for your church around the world. Strengthen its witness, O God, especially in places where it's hard pressed. We ask your blessing also on those who are sick, those who grieve, and especially those who've lost hope. Help us to remember the glorious promise of Easter and fill us with the eternal hope of the gospel. By your Spirit, make our hearts burn within us that we may welcome him as host at this table. Fed by his gracious hand, make us one with all who share his feast. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory. And may we rejoice with the indescribable and glorious joy. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant shed in my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Drink all of you of it. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for God's people. Draw near with joy and thanksgiving.
Lord be with you. Gracious God, we give you thanks that there is an Easter morning and that the words that come are peace. May your spirit breathe upon us so that we might be sent forth just as Jesus, to look just like Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Do not be afraid, but go, go with the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen. <laughs>